We are talking Nemesis 5, the new model. This one is directed by Dustin Ferguson. You may be thinking, what the hell is Nemesis, let alone be Nemesis 5? Well, Nemesis is a now long-running B-movie series that originally starred Oliver Gruner in the original movie, and that was kind of a cyborg, Terminator-style kind of movie. And then it kind of span off with a, uh, a, a new kind of lead uh, actress called Sue Price, who was just going to be a very muscled woman, and she did uh, Nemesis 2 to 4. Now, here we have Nemesis 5, which does actually have a cameo appearance from Sue Price, but our, our kind of our main um, kind of new sort of lead person is played by Shula Craig as Ari, uh, aka the new model. And essentially, this movie loves some exposition. We have a huge, long kind of like dialogue to kind of read at the beginning of the movie that will kind of catch you up with the kind of the previous kind of four movies. And at some point in the future, Sue Price is Alex, who was kind of like the second incarnation of the, kind of the, the hero. She is kind of trained up this kind of this new girl who she kind of like uh, finds when you know, she's an orphan, etc. And she kind of sends her back in time to 2077, I think it is, before the kind of like the, um, the kind of the robot revolution, so to speak, kind of took over everything to try and um, stop the kind of the war of disinformation. Uh, the kind of the way the cyborgs get control is ultimately through propaganda. And she kind of is, is sent back to try and try and stop this from happening. And she kind of teams up with a group of rebels and tries to face down the, the cyborg menace. That's kind of your plot here. So... Somewhat convoluted to begin with, um, this series was originally uh, kind of obviously a low budget straight to kind of video movie when the original one came out and as the series has progressed they've got progressive, progressively lower in budget now for this one it seems to be almost on a kind of a shoestring budget but let's talk about what works first of all. Now I don't know if this was by design or whether it's just a kind of a happy accident but this movie does actually have comparisons to kind of some modern kind of um, problems that we have in our own world and almost kind of you know uses this movie as a metaphor of certain things. Firstly the kind of the war of disinformation I mean the whole crux of the uh, the sort of the cyborg the red army as they're kind of known the red hammerheads is that they are using propaganda to sway public opinion on their side. And then the kind of like the quote unquote good guys who are the police uh, are doing the same. And obviously where it's a member of the kind of the unknowing public, where do your kind of, you know, allegiances lie in? Whoever has the best PR spin ultimately. So that's quite an interesting kind of parallel, especially when you kind of look to kind of modern politics and kind of the way people can, you know, campaign and stuff like that. And kind of, you know, all the kind of the, um, the sort of social media uh, politicians and stuff like that that you'll get. So I thought that was kind of quite an interesting comparison. Like I said, I don't know if this was by design or they were just a kind of happy accident that it just kind of fell in line with this, but nonetheless, I thought the comparisons could be drawn. But not only that, there's also some, towards the end of the movie, uh, I think we kind of, we use the, I mean, in this film, obviously, people are having cybernetic upgrades and things like that and changing themselves for the better. And again, I think that has, again, maybe by happy accident, commentary on the kind of the beauty industry and how people are constantly having to kind of like change themselves through plastic surgery, filters, makeup, all of this kind of thing, you know, unrealistic beauty standards and how people are kind of ultimately obsessed by that. And again, it kind of draws comparison in this movie, a version of that is having these kind of cybernetic implants that ultimately sort of take away your humanity. So it actually... On the, you know, you might think, wow, that sounds like really deep and kind of like has some really kind of philosophical kind of like sci-fi elements here. But well, hold your horses. Don't do, be expecting anything like 2001 Space Odyssey because that's as far as the kind of the sophistication goes of this movie. So um, the rest of this film is a, a woman dressed up in a mini skirt and thigh high boots. Um, trudging around with a bunch of kind of randos running away from uh, cyborgs who are basically like people with dodgy wigs um, to try and kind of find the kind of the leader of the Red Army played by uh, um, Mel Novak and his sister played by Dawn Lee Heising um, and uh, yeah and ultimately kind of stop the bad guys so um, with some very kind of low budget special effects some very kind of like unconvincing fight scenes 
The movie is incredibly short. It's only just over an hour long, so it's massively short, so obviously it's got a talk running time. There's virtually no characterization. We, we start off with the, the movie with a kind of a, I guess you want to call it a flashback, but it actually takes place in the future. And then we have our main character travel back in time to still in the future where we are now, but, you know, less so. And then we have Sue Price, who doesn't have any lines. She's just kind of like, you know, it has a bit of an action scene in the most unconvincing gunfight you'll ever see. Uh, and then we have this, she takes care of this kind of little girl who is, for some reason, they put in a stupid wig. Why not just cast someone who's got dark hair? I don't know, but they've got this little girl in a kind of a, a black wig, obviously, to kind of like marry up with her, her adult counterpart, uh, played by Shuli Craig, who is our kind of our main character. And then she's kind of dressed up like a stripper, travels back in, in time, and uh, yeah, just at that point, she, she's integrated into the kind of the resistance, and uh, we get a few kind of like laughable kind of fight scenes. Uh, they are pursued by the um, a nebula, which is kind of like their, their most lethal kind of um, cyborg robot hunter type thing, which is defeated stupidly easily. Um, in again another unconvincing fight. He looks like he's wearing a bodysuit. You can actually see the kind of the zip uh, around the, down the back of his head and stuff like that. It's quite funny. Um, and then our kind of face off with um, Mel Novak and his and his sister, uh, who then have like an exposition uh, climax. It's just basically telling you stuff. And then there's kind of a brief fight scene with a couple more randos. So it's it is it is. I mean the special effects of the laser guns. They look like they, they literally look like toys. And the kind of the um, the After Effects style kind of laser fights here and stuff like that. I mean, it's, it is a shoestring budget. Um, Ferguson, who I've reviewed a film of his recently, The Conjuring Girls, I think, seems to me, looking at his filmography, he's just churning out very, very quick kind of like B-movies that are just like shot over a few days and kind of churned out with kind of the, 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 the most minimal kind of special effects script and that sort of thing. And, I mean, the, ne the Nemesis series was never a high-budget series to begin with. And as I've said, they've kind of got progressively kind of lower budget as the kind of the, uh, the films have progressed. I mean, two to four were on par, I would say. But this one really is a, a kind of a, a step down from an already low-budget film. Like I said, there are some kind of like, um, some, some fairly te intelligent ideas. They may have been an accident. And there are, there's plenty of kind of like pretty women and stuff like that. And the kind of the, uh, there's a kind of scene in a kind of a cantina style bar, which I think was probably the best scene. But overall, it's, it's really not that interesting. It, but it, I mean, it's very, very short. Um, so it's not going to kind of take up too much of your time. I'll give it a four out of 10, just for kind of curiosity, really. I, I, I still had a little bit of fun with that. And I did, if this, you know, if this did actually intend to have some kind of comparisons to kind of real life problems, then it was kind of, it was surprisingly kind of insightful. But um, I suspect that might have been just a fluke. But there you go. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.